This week in our devotions, we're going to be having a look at some of the events at the beginning of Jesus' ministry. And each day, I'll aim to leave you with something to ponder. Today, we're going to be having a look at the temptations of Jesus in the desert. Directly after Jesus' baptism by John, he's led by the Spirit to the desert. So what's happening here? At his public baptism, Jesus has been launched into his mission to lead God's people, indeed all people, back to life as intended by God at creation, of a close relationship with him. Now Jesus goes to the desert, alone, without human company, to a harsh environment of extremes, very hot by day and very cold by night, alone, not eating, 40 days and nights. At this, the outset of his ministry, Jesus needs to focus utterly on what the Father asks and not ever be persuaded, of course, by anything or anyone. By way of background, the practice or discipline of fasting and prayer is found in several places in the Bible. Nehemiah, Esther, Psalms, Daniel, Luke, Acts and more. And it's not to give the impression of piety, but to humble oneself before God. A little more recently, John Wesley fasted twice weekly from sunup to 3 p.m. How about 40 days and nights? What's special about this? 40 is a significant number in the Bible. It occurs many times and generally indicates a time of trial or testing, almost a period of probation. Moses spent 40 days twice on Mount Sinai receiving God's laws. Jonah warned the people of Nineveh for 40 days. Ezekiel and Elijah were both bidden to take on 40-day tasks. The exodus from Egypt to the Promised Land took 40 years. At the end of Jesus' 40 days of fasting, with close private prayer and fellowship with God, came the devil, aiming to trick Jesus away from the path his Heavenly Father had plotted for him. Let's look at the temptations one by one, and there's a point to ponder after each one. So the first temptation in Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 to 4. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After fasting for 40 days and nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Jesus' reply here is from Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3, the idea being that God makes provision. I am not saying our relationship with God is as deep as that between Jesus and God, but does what tempts us away from faith come when we are at a low point, urging us to take an easy way out of something rather than trusting God to provide. Are we able to avoid disappointment if we don't get all we crave? The second temptation is in Matthew chapter 4 verses 5 to 7. Then the devil took him to the holy city and set him on the highest point of the temple if you are the Son of God, he said, throw yourself down, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, it is also written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. 
So the devil teases Jesus, jump, God will provide, and dangling a text from Psalm 91 at him. Jesus counters this with scripture from Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 16, when the fleeing Israelites wanted water. God may not remove all hardships we experience, but he never abandons us. Are we sometimes dissatisfied with God's solution? Ponder on this. The third and final temptation is from Matthew chapter 4, verses 8 to 10. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All this I will give you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him, and angels came and attended him. The devil finally comes clean with what he really wants of the Son of God, namely his loyalty and worship which Jesus will not give him. And here's a final thought for you to ponder on. Do we succumb to the temptation to put worship of God second to anything else or anyone else? Maybe a hobby, accumulating wealth, social media popularity, recognition at work, or any other personal desires. I'll leave that with you. Oh, what a friend, what a friend we have in Jesus, who knows our every weakness and the burdens that we bear. Oh, what a joy, what a privilege and mercy to carry everything to Him in prayer. Jesus, we come, our defenses are undone, and we lay our fragile prayers before Your throne. Jesus, we trust in Your never-failing love, knowing Safe within your grace we find our home We find our home